conservative icon known as Jane Roe, who was the plaintiff in the landmark 1973 Supreme Court ruling that legalized abortion, uh, is, well, it turns out that she's not necessarily or was not necessarily truthful about her conversion to the conservative cause. So uh, now I told you she's known as Jane Roe. Uh, and again, that's because she was uh, a plaintiff in that uh, Supreme Court ruling. But her real name is Norma McCorvey. And she actually died back in 2017. Now, the reason that I'm talking about her today is because she had admitted something uh, that uh, is very, very relevant and very interesting as, of course, Republicans all across the country are continuing to go after the Roe versus Wade decision, especially now that the Supreme Court is overly conservative. And if Donald Trump were to win a second term, then it would be almost assuredly that he would replace Ruth Bader Ginsburg with another social conservative. Uh, so now, going back to McCorvey, right? So again, she was well known for suing the right to suing for the right to get a legal and safe abortion. But then later on, for becoming a star on the evangelical right, for then being opposed to abortion and women's rights. Uh, so now it, it's a strange conversion. And a lot of people thought, well, that's a curious turnaround. Now, conservatives, of course, celebrated as a giant victory. Moral majority, of course, lauded her. Uh, I, she went on to make a lot of speaking appearances. Uh, and they say, look, hey, if we could turn her against women's rights, or <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, to be pro-life, well, then other women could turn as well to the right side. A again, she was also uh, a lesbian. She was also gay, part of the LGBT community. So she said, quote, she, she that, uh, quote, unquote, renounced that, right? Uh, renounced that, you know, sinful, uh, you know, devious lifestyle and became a good Christian woman uh, who was pro-life. But it turns out, of course, thanks to her new deathbed confession that we had found out, uh, this is anything but a real conversion. Now, in fact, uh, there's a new documentary that's coming out about her, and that's why uh, we see this video. And I'm not going to show you it because it doesn't belong to me and I don't have the rights to show it. Uh, but I'm going to tell you about it, what she says. Uh, and she told director Nick Sweeney that conservatives originally approached her to try to get her on their side because she was a big get, a big, uh, a, a big possible ally to the conservative movement. She said, quote, I'm a big fish. And of course, they tried to get me because of that. Now, she also admits, though, in that same um that, that same video, that she didn't do this for free. Quote, I think it was a mutual thing. I took their money and they took me out in front of the cameras and told me what to say. That's what I'd say. I'm a good actress. Of course, I'm not acting now. So, look, I took their money and they told me what to say. And I would say it. And that's it. She literally sold herself out for cash. And the, the conservatives offered. They bought her. Now, that's not only unbelievable, but also totally believable. Because understand that the conservative movement has one thing going for it. They got the money. They got all the money. And, and what they do is, look, they're bankrolled, of course, by billionaires. Um, billionaires, special interest corporations. And in order to get votes based on unpopular economic policies, they've been fighting this so-called culture war, right? It's the culture wars. It's the trans people in bathrooms. It's, uh, you know, uh, up to recently, LGBT rights. Uh, and back in the 70s, abortion rights. Uh, even earlier, contraception. That's all a front. All of these, you know, rights for, for marginalized people are under attack or were denied in order to get people riled up to have them vote for conservatives so that corporations and wealthy people can get tax cuts. And that's what it's always been about. Corporations can get deregulated. Uh, the banks can be deregulated uh, so they can pollute every, well, not the banks polluting, but 
uh, you know, industry can pollute everywhere. And that's the whole real, real reason for these culture wars. That's why they continue to fight them, even though now the American people are generally on the side of more liberal cultural issues. So there's that. Uh, and so they use that money again to buy people off in order to get them on their side. And, and if you're a woman or if you're a minority, uh, you know, it, 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 like you're, you know, you're a gay, like if you're a gay black woman, oh, they can't wait to shovel money, uh, you know, just, just like buckets of cash at you to get you to speak against your own community. So that is the biggest way. To get like that's one of the best ways to get rich. Like, so if you like there's no money in in, in progressivism, right? I know this because I'm a progressive and I'm poor, <laughs> right? I don't make a lot of money. Uh, there's money in conservatism, and it's because of who backs it: large corporations and the wealthy. Uh, and so look, they've got the money, but they have all, all the unpopular positions, uh, and so yeah, they use that to their advantage and they use it very, very well. Dave Rubin's a great example of that. Dave Rubin couldn't wait to sell himself out. And he's been very successful at doing so. Uh, and so, look, that's also, by the way, where Tommy Lauren, I think, and Candace Owens came from. I, I think they're also secretly not as conservative as they, as they put themselves on. I mean, I remember going through Tommy and Lauren's old Twitter, right? Before she deleted a bunch of her college tweets. And I remember I showed you guys video on the show where, you know, she was asking questions about and 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 then in the framing was with climate change. Like, what are we going to do about climate change? Because it's dangerous and it's coming. This is when she was on a college program. That was before she was given a boatload of money. Now. Well, now you see. <laughs> so she's not, she, I don't think she's a genuine person. Now, now maybe she's a little bit, she has a lot of hate towards the uh, Democratic Party or for towards liberals and stuff because we roast her every day on Twitter. But as far as her personal beliefs, I mean, she came out as, as pro-choice even. And so she's not as conservative. I think she's, she's faking most of her beliefs and, and she does it for the money. And the result is, of course, they make a lot of money, they make bank, and then you have old white men who generally watch Fox News that get reassured in their supremacy. And that's what this is. That, oh, no, we're right about everything. No, see, we even have the young, uh, young hot women, uh, you know, that are supporting us. Oh, look at that young black woman. Uh, she's saying that uh, we're right about everything. Well, that's wonderful. I'm going to keep watching. Somebody give her a raise. Somebody give her her own show. And that's what this is. That's They're right. Now, it's important to see these people, of course, sell out. But look, selling out and saying something different in public doesn't also mean that you're not in, in the, you know, the same person that you were in private. You were just willing to sell out publicly uh, and hurt other people. Now, this woman, she she was this woman, right? Uh, you know, Norma McCorvey. She, she was that person. Uh, and so she said in the film that I wonder how many abortions Donald Trump is responsible for. I'm sure he's lost count if he can count that high. She also adds, if a young woman wants to have an abortion, fine. That's no skin off my ass. You know, that's why they call it a choice. It's your choice. So again, this is this is deathbed confession, right? This is before she died in 2017, shortly before she died. And she's like, yeah, of course I was faking it. Yes, they were paying me. No, I don't believe that. You know, I, I still believe in abortion as a right. But they paid me to come out and say that it wasn't. <laughs> I win. I get money. <laughs> Wonderful. And how much money did she get, actually? Uh, well, I don't necessarily know the total amount of money. However... Documents do show that she was given at least $456,911 in quote-unquote benevolent gifts from the anti-abortion movement. That's a lot of money. There's a lot of money. <laughs> so now, that sure as hell doesn't sound like somebody who believes in the pro-life movement. 
I'm just saying. Now, that film, again, it comes out in a couple of days. Uh, and in it, they feature some evangelical leaders, right? One of them almost corroborates her story. Almost, right? Doesn't go so far as to admit that she was getting paid. But uh, this is from Reverend Schneck. Uh, I'm sorry, Reverend Schenk. Uh, now, he heard her confession and said, yeah, I'm not really surprised. It's kind of admits, eh. I mean, yeah, I was kind of taking it back. But, you know, at the end of the day, I'm kind of really not surprised about this. He said, quote, I never heard her say anything like this, but I knew what we were doing. And I and there were times when I'm sure she knew. And I wondered, is she playing us? What I didn't have the guts to say was because I know damn well we're playing her. Well, of course, <laughs> of course. Yes. They, look, they offered her a bunch of money because she was a very high profile face. She was, again, a big fish, right? To, to publicly turn her against abortion after she had won the right to an abortion is gigantic. Of course you would want to have that person on your side. Even if you have to pay them to be disingenuous. And that's exactly what happened here. Now, he also confirmed that she was coached on what to say in a lot of her speeches. So... I mean, yes, she was coached. Of course she was. Yes. And that corroborates her saying, yeah, they, well, they would bring me out and I would say whatever they wanted me to say. And that was it. And then I get paid and then we were all happy. Are you at all surprised? You shouldn't be because, look, I think a lot of the pro-life movement is a sham. I, I do know people that are personally very pro-life. Uh, and, and I understand that. And those people, I think, are legitimate. But then there are a lot of people, especially in the leadership, who don't give a damn about life. No, what they give a damn about, what their whole purpose is, is controlling women and controlling their bodies, making sure that these women, these uppity women know their place and will not succeed in a man's world. Why? Because they believe if a woman succeeds in a, man world, in a man's world, then they don't. That's what it's always been about. You keep women down so that men can be on top. They can make all the decisions and more importantly, keep all the wealth. And this shows, of course, that those who benefit from that, uh, from that system, from keeping it the way that it was, will do anything, anything to keep it that way. Hey guys, hopefully you enjoyed that free video. Now I'm going to have to ask you a favor. Between the uh, demonetization and the YouTube algorithm messing around with view counts, etc., we're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYTNation set up to help us rely on the, you guys, the viewers, instead of big corporate ads. Look. You know the show. You know how I'm not in favor of big corporations anyway. So help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron. Patreon.com slash TYT Nation. That goes a long way to help us keep the lights on. And you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media.